This episode of Diecast Emporium, presented in part by Buffalo Road Imports, we're going to take a look at two of the new offerings from Diecast Masters, who is now the sole Caterpillar licensee to make Diecast models. Of course, excluding CCM, that is. So the first one we're going to take a look at is model number 85233. For reference, both of these models are part of what's known as the Highline series. So they come in these very nice collectible tins. All you got to do is pull the tape off of one end, and slide the model out. It's actually kind of ironic and funny to me personally how it went from frustration max with twisty ties and everything else to literally just having a sleeve that all you have to do is pull off. So well done there. So taking a look at the box, this is of course the Cat F or excuse me, the Cat 420 F2 IT. IT, of course, if you don't know, stands for integrated tool carrier backhoe. And that means it's got this little arm which is designed to change out attachments quickly. The top looks like that with a picture of the real machine working. Looking good. Diecast Masters on the side, the aforementioned Highline series, and another picture of the machine at work with some specification details on the real machine. And you can pause the video right now and check those out if you want to. So like all of the Highline models, pop the top. Inside is a small brochure on the um, scale lineup replicas for Diecast Masters. However, as we've said before, and as I've said before, a lot of the models you get, you see in here have either been discontinued or uh, they're not going to be made at all. Nice rubber insert, rubber foam insert, which pops out rather well. And the model sits inside, along with the attachments that go flying. So, here's the model. I'll let you guys take a look at that real quick while I get the attachments out of the box. Here are the forks. This is a plastic piece. And it just simply hooks onto the front. There we go. You can see it better with the white background. It just hooks onto the front of the loader part of the backhoe. Here is a auger for the rear. Also a plastic piece, but pretty nice. And if you own any of the older Norscott backhoes, essentially these are the same implements. In fact, they are the same implements. The jackhammer, however, is in all metal casting, except for the little jackhammer thing on the back. Um, but unlike the backhoe, it's fixed in position. It's not spring-loaded. And last but certainly not least is your integrated tool carrier arm which extends out after some fuss, which is why it's not on camera. Okay, well, maybe it'll work better on the other backhoe that I show you. But this is the integrated tool carrier arm. It's got a small hole right here. So should you have, like, some old jewelry chain, jewelry chains, try saying that ten times fast, uh, that you can probably steal from your old lady or your parole officer or whatever, and string it through here, um, it would look really, really cool. But of course, this is the IT arm that would go on the front. So taking a look at the backhoe, the first thing that a lot of people will notice, of course, is because it is a Diecast Masters model, it's got our little construction worker in the cab. The cab does not open. And before I go any further, there is no way without taking the cab off and you're going to do some damage to the model. But there is no way to actually turn the seat around so the operator can operate the backhoe portion of it. So that's the first disappointment. Moving on to the stabilizer legs. They come down to really only about that far. So as you can see, which is why I wanted to do it on this table, it's not close enough to touch the ground, nor is it strong enough to support the model wheels free. Looking underneath, again, the stabilizers have a good pattern, so they look nice. Um, your fuel tanks and everything is modeled. Your steering is modeled, but as you can see here, it's it, there's not a very good range of motion there. But again, something is better than nothing. Uh, the biggest disappointment for me personally, since we haven't seen a new cat backhoe since the um, Norscott pieces, is that the arm is still not high enough to clear the side of an American dump truck. 
And if you will give me one second here, I will grab CT660 and demonstrate that. So here it is, red CT660 dump truck. And as you can see, it fouls the side of it. So unless you're working on a ramp or some sort of a dirt berm, you're gonna need a little assistance to get the bucket and arms over the side of the truck. The bucket is smaller than the previous four in one buckets we've seen on backhoes through the years. It is a metal casting. It's got a decent range of tilt. But again, this is the extent of the carry angle. You can see where the cylinders are all the way in. On the back, for the backhoe part, again, pretty much the exact same thing we've seen for years with your extendable um, arm section here, dipper arm section, I should say. Uh, the bucket has a small five teeth um, trenching bucket, so it's very, very skinny, but it is a metal piece. And also the range of motion on that is limited somewhat as well, but definitely significantly better than those on the front. So we'll fold this back in here. There you go. That's in a position where it could drive down the road. One disappointment, another disappointment I should say, is on previous models of cap backhoes on your stabilizer pads, you had the ability to flip them to a soft pad like this has for working on the side of a road where you don't want to damage the asphalt. Uh, or you could flip, uh, flip it to the other side where you have a little bit more aggressive stabilizing position if you're working in like dirt or other ground that you would need to be well supported in as opposed to a street. And of course, if you're working in dirt, you don't necessarily have to worry about um, damaging things. Up on top is a really nice light, although I've never in my life seen a backhoe with the, um, with, with the cord, for lack of a better word, running outside the cab and up to the light on top, but who knows. So not to beat a dead horse, that's the 420 F2. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll come back with the European counterpart to this model. Okay, so we're back, and this is model number 85249, which is the other backhoe, or other new backhoe, released by Diecast Masters. Fortunately, this one's in upside down, but that's okay. So for those of you that aren't familiar, um, maybe some of the younger people that watch this channel, this type of backhoe is not very relevant um, in this part of the world, the side shift backhoe. Uh, however, they are extremely popular in European cities because as I will show you in a moment, they have a little bit different outrigger setup and the actual backhoe is a side shift mechanism so it can shift left or right. Um, so it can work in confined tight European cities and streets. Up on top, a great picture. See our little guy there working. Picture of the model on the side. Again, Diecast Masters and your item number for reference. And here's the back. Move it on a little closer, and you guys that want to pause it, there's your specification details. So this is going to have all of the same implements, so I'm not even going to bother taking them out. Um, all of the same implements that came with the 420 will come with the 432. It's entirely up to you which backhoe you want. And I think a lot of that has to do with what part of the world you live in. So, let's take a look at the differences on this machine. So, the biggest difference, like I said, is the ability to shift. Put this a little closer so you guys can see this is the ability to shift the whole backhoe arm left to right. That's called side shifting or side shift. That way you don't have to reposition the machine every time you need to get into some confined quarters. The outriggers go up and down just like this. You can see me pulling it out. Do the same thing on the other side. You have to be careful not to pull them out too much because they will come completely out of the cylinder jackets. But if you just pose this model, 
you can see that very well. Uh, but it will rest evenly on the ground with the outriggers deployed, which is already an improvement from the 420. And really, just the whole backhoe mechanism I really like on this. I really like the ability of it to shift left and right. Um, and really, other than the design graphics here up on the front where it says 432 F2, second. on camera adjust anyway it says 432 f2 up there there you go you got a brief glimpse of it but just like its evil twin brother unfortunately it does not clear the side of a dump truck but the one good thing is most european dump trucks that i have seen you can almost consider them a flatbed with sides they are much lower the bed is much lower and doesn't sit up quite as high as they do on American trucks. So you probably will have no problem loading a low-sided dump truck with this machine. So if you collect Caterpillar machines or if you're really, really into backhoes, that's the only reason I would recommend these models. Um, personally, I was expecting a lot more uh, given the design timetable that Diecast Masters had. And because these two backhoes, unlike the 390, which was already produced by Norscott before, you know, everything went all cattywombles. Um, this, the backhoes were really their first sole design. Uh, so, you know, give them some time to let the, to get the kinks out. I'm sure they'll get it right. Um, but overall, as I mentioned before, if you're into backhoes or you want some new backhoe models, they can be recommended for that. Last but not least, go ahead and look at the top of your screen right now. I will pose a little link where you can go and look at my Diecast Masters unboxing video where 11 of the new Diecast Masters models are unboxed. So there's a little something for everybody in there. Be sure to check that out and give us a like on there as well. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.